Hey, what's going on guys? Another knife I want to talk about for you and do a review. This one's big. Can we get the whole thing on uh, screen here? I'm talking about an Ontario knife, one of their fixed blades. This is the um, SP10 Marine Raider Bowie. It's part of their Spec Plus line. Very cool. Let me show you the box real quick. It's one of their newer boxes. And, of course, uh, when you get this, you get a little sleeve that covers the blade. And it gives you a nice uh, caution here. Of course, knives are sharp. You should know that, especially if you're buying a knife. But, uh, you know, put it in there anyway. But I do want to show this real quick. They gave you some shoelaces. Isn't that nice? Just in case uh, yours break, you can replace them. Uh, no, actually, they gave you this for the, uh, the sheath. All right, so you can loop it through there and use that as a leg tie. Just kind of random to use shoelaces. But, hey, whatever. All right, so let's start off with this uh, sheath here. Uh, I am a fan of this sheath. I do like this style of uh, sheath. They have this on a couple of their uh, models from Ontario. And I did actually use these. Uh, sometimes when I'm using fixed blades, I'll have the sheath with me, of course. I'll take it out of the sheath when I'm using it and put it back when I'm not, but I don't always have it on my side. Um, more times than not, I'll just have it with the knife to keep the blade you know, from getting any kind of damage until I'm using it. But uh, this one I did carry on my side for hours and hours when I was uh, ATVing and you know playing around in the woods. Um, had this one for a long time, so it's got a fair amount of use on it. But it's very comfortable. I do like this style with the uh, the drop down and the metal ring. And of course on the bottom here, I kind of wish this was also a metal ring just to continue with the um, the theme here. It's just kind of random to have just a plastic D loop. It does work. I did use the leg tie. I don't always use that on fixed blades because for me, I always tie it nice and tight and then it ends up cutting the circulation off in your leg and it's kind of uncomfortable. Um, but it is there. It just obviously keeps the, the front from swinging when you're moving about. I like the double straps on here. It has kind of a um, almost a half back that's open. So you have the one strap that actually keeps the blade from wiggling around too much in there. And then the cross strap, which is important because this goes over the guard, okay, to keep the knife from pulling out. Now, some people might criticize any sheet that has a bunch of straps on it. They're going to say, well, you know, it, it's not quickly accessible. Well, all you have to do is leave it unstrapped if you really want to get to it quickly. But um, for the purpose of this knife, it's not a fighting knife for me. Uh, I just use it in the woods to split wood and, and have fun with. Um, so I like something that's nice and secure, and this was very secure with these straps. All right, slips out nice and easy. Again, having the kind of half back, it makes it nice putting it in because you're not just going from the top, all right, especially since this has kind of a wider, uh, you know, tip portion on here. So you can kind of come in on somewhat of an angle and then hook it in like that. Of course, put the across one on first, then the side. Just cinches it up. It's really uh, secure in here. Doesn't make any noise at all. It's nice and tight. So I like that. I do like the uh, these button snaps are very strong as well. So that's the that's the sheath. All right, nice. Uh, it's kind of a leather backing with the um, nylon front on here, and you can see all the rivets that go across. Now the only thing with this sheath, of course, it is kind of you're stuck with this position. These are rivets, but not holes, so that you can't like you know tie this on your bag or anything. At least not easily um, through the sheath at all. A lot of times, you know, sheets will have eyelets for that, that option. All right, so let's take a look at this bad boy. Look at that blade. That is nine and three quarter inches of 1095 carbon. It's a 0.19 inches thick. This is a full tang knife, but it's completely wrapped, um, you know, with the handle. So it's obviously not exposed here, but the tang does go through the uh, handle all the way down to the, um, the lanyard hole, okay? So... Maybe not traditionally full tang how you guys know it. Most people are used to full tangs with basically an exposed spine and, and front side. So you can see that actual blade. Um, and then there's scales on either side, whereas opposed to this, of course, it's completely wrapped. And this is just a craton. It's a rubbery, a very stiff um, rubbery type material. And we'll talk about that handle a little bit and my opinions on it in a minute. But uh, yeah, nine and three quarter inches uh, on this blade comes to a nice fine point. I love... The way this looks i love this style of uh a buoy blade it's my favorite um the uh, uh handle here is five uh, and a quarter inches making it 15 inches overall uh the weight on this 22.4 ounces and of course it's not going to be a little lightweight knife it's very large substantial it is an awesome awesome chopper it is going to be on the heavier side i can tell you you know 
I, I carry a gun on me all the time, sometimes a larger gun, but um, you know this is on your side. It's, uh, it's you know, almost a pound and a half. It's, I think, what, 22.4, it's a pound, and it's a pound 6.4 ounces. So, there you go. It's uh, definitely a hefty knife. Uh, that weight does definitely help and contribute when you're chopping and processing wood. This is phenomenal for, um, for chopping, okay, especially smaller trees where you kind of bend them down, make a stress point, you know, towards the base of it, kind of hack into it. Works beautifully for that. It is very good also for uh, batoning. However, this nice point on here, although beneficial in some areas, um, it hindered the batoning a little bit. Um, sometimes like a spear point blade is a little bit better for that because when I'm whacking into the wood, sometimes depending on how hard I'm hitting and where on the blade I'm hitting, when I hit on the edge, that tip kind of bites into my baton a little bit. All right, so although it's awesome for, for hacking and swinging at things, uh, batoning can be a little bit difficult. You, you're a little bit limited on uh, using the full length of the blade because of that point. All right, just something I noticed. As far as the grip on here, it has a nice big guard on it, by the way, which is very nice as well. Uh, and it is steel. It's not part of the handle. It's a separate piece. All right, so you have a steel guard. Uh, I like the handle design overall. There's not really any palm swell with larger uh, blades like this. I do like uh, a palm swell, just kind of fits the handle a little bit better. This is very uh, symmetrical um, and just kind of straight across. The one thing I did not like about this, I liked it, but I didn't like it after I used it. When I first saw this, I like how the, um, the butt end of the knife here kind of swooped up a little bit. Okay, I figured, oh yeah, I can choke down on this all the way, put it against my pinky, and it'll give me more leverage, which is great until you start doing it, you know? Uh, a theory on how something might work and actually using it and it working the same way are two different things. Now, in theory, it's awesome. But when I was using this without gloves on, I found that I was getting pretty irritated down here, especially after about five or ten minutes of chopping. Um, you get fatigue anyway, but I was starting to get a little bit of a hot spot down on the pinky just because even though this is rubber, it's very stiff rubber, but it is rubber, it just comes to a little bit too much of an edge around here so that when your your hand when you're choked down on here you know the, the vibrations when you're chopping into something very vigorously over and over and over again it just it's rubbing and rubbing and rubbing and it just it's uncomfortable on the pinky so although this thing is a sexy beast and a uh, hell of a chopper um, I did have to kind of fine-tune what I was using it for and really just be aware of, of those two big negatives. The big negative is, you know, batoning, not too close to the tip, kind of had a hit on the spine. And even on the spine, although it's not sharpened, you can see there is a swedge on here. So this is a fairly thin um, edge. Again, not sharp, but fairly thin. So when you're whacking the hell out of it with a baton, it wants to stick between the point and that edge. Okay, so maybe not the best batoning uh, fixed blade. And again, you know, I, I found that I had to keep choking up a little bit because when I was riding down low, although it was great for the, you know, the chopping and the swinging, it was irritating my finger. So those are the only real two negatives on this. Besides that, having a big hunk of uh, 1095 carbon is always going to get the job done. It is powder coated black. Uh, I'll tell you right now, I don't mind that because it's smooth. Um, some of the other knives out there that are powder coated, they have this rough like sandpaper finish. Not good. Obviously, it creates friction through the wood. Um, you see these on some of the uh, SE uh, fixed blades out there. And I mean, there's a slew of companies that do it where it's really textured, but this one's actually very smooth, which is nice. It aids, you know, it, or I shouldn't say it aids, it doesn't aid in anything except for keeping the, uh, the 1095 from rusting. But what it doesn't do is hinder the, um, you know, the performance of that blade because it's not creating that extra friction by having a coating on there. And it's held up. But phenomenal, I think. For the uh, the abuse and use that I put on this knife, I'm very surprised that it's not starting to wear off by now. Alright, so their coating's very good. Also, you'll notice right there on the tank stamp, USA. American made, 1095, large, functional, usable fixed blade. And you'll find these for about 65 bucks if you go to your knife dealers. Um, it's even cheaper on Amazon. I found it for 52 bucks, I think, or 52.50, something like that. I'll put a link in the description box to that. I don't know how many they have in uh, in stock, but um, you know, between 50 and 60 bucks, is it the very best knife you can find? You know, for chopping and woodwork, um, probably not. But it's definitely up there on the list of ones that I want to you know have on me. Um, you know, the only two drawbacks again is that that point and of course the uh, the very end. So the whole middle of the knife is really good. <laughs> but in all seriousness, um, I really like this one a lot. 
the straight edge on the bottom here does offer um, you know more capability as far as uh, you know small cutting tasks you can even though this thing is massive you can still kind of whittle wood a little bit you can make your uh, tent pegs and all kinds of stuff like that and notch out pretty easily with that that straight edge and just have a little bit of belly towards the front uh, but I mean overall it's just a really cool looking knife it's one of my favorite designs as far as buoys go um, it, it's definitely up there super super cool so yeah I mean if I can make this better it's kind of a toss-up because I love the way that blade looks, but it is not the best or the very best um, style for like a, uh, a survival woods knife, so to speak. That swedge, it's pretty badass, but it's got to go. And although I really like this point, I did do a lot of stabbing. I don't know if I actually showed some testing videos on that or not. I know I did some of the um, Ontario stuff, but a lot of stabbing and then prying out. And that tip, although it's pretty damn fine, no issues at all. You can see how pointy that thing still is, all right? And there was a lot of use on that, all right? So that's uh, pretty impressive. But in all honesty, I would, I would round the tip off the tiniest bit, and I would get rid of this uh, swedge, even keeping the same design, just because of the, the hindrance in batoning. It, it made it a little bit more difficult to do that. Uh, you know, it kept sticking into my, or my baton kept sticking into that tip and the, uh, the spine of this knife. It was just a little bit of a hassle, and obviously you don't want any kind of hassle. But, um... You know, if you're just screwing around and your life's not depending on it, and you just want a good uh, camp knife, this one's definitely badass. And for the price, it's pretty hard to beat. It is definitely one of my top 10 favorite uh, fixed blades for just overall woods work. Super, super cool. So that's pretty much it. That's my review on the uh, SP10. I definitely have some more uh, fixed blade videos coming, some more reviews, maybe some more um testing footage if you guys are into it it is winter i love going out in cold weather in the snow atving up through the woods you know going through the trails a little bit and um you know doing some knife testing it is super super fun eventually i'd love to be able to get a gopro and uh you know be able to do some atv videos too strap something on my chest and be able to film all that hands-free that'd be super cool especially for the knife testing uh it would make my job a hell of a lot easier because setting up the tripod and stuff and I've whacked my tripod. I actually, the camera that I have right now, the Sony uh, Handycam, uh, I got a, like a dent in it from <laughs> swinging back and hitting the thing. I'm surprised the camera didn't break. Thank God. But anyway, yeah, super cool knife. I do highly recommend it for the price. It's hard to beat, but uh, it has an, its inherent uh, downsides, obviously. So there you go. Hope you guys enjoyed the review. Oh, by the way, I don't think I mentioned it, but this is flat ground and it still had really good performance. You can see that the, um, the grind mark or the grind line here is only about halfway up the blade. And that may not seem extremely impressive because obviously there's there's better performing grinds. A full flat or even a, a full um, convex ground blade will perform a lot better. But um, you know, for the price, if you have a steady hand and a grinder or a little bit of experience, you can definitely modify this one. Um, you know, for about 65 bucks, I wouldn't be afraid to, to play around a little on the grinding machine to, to try to get that to be an uh, even better performer. But being uh, flat ground and only having, you know, I don't know, maybe an inch and a quarter of length from the, the height of the grind, it still performed pretty damn nice. And I think it's just because of the extra heft on here. So something I did want to mention real quick before I ended the video. But anyway, that's all. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you have an awesome day, and I'll see you soon. Take care.